The National Broadcasting Company presents The Big Show, the first half hour presented by the makers of Reynolds Aluminum, the Reynolds Metals Company, and starring the glamorous, unpredictable Tallulah Bankhead. <laughs> For the next hour and 30 minutes, you will be entertained by some of the biggest names in show business. Such bright stars as... Fred Allen. Vivian Blaine. Judy Canova. Bill Foster. Portland Harper. Johnny Johnston. Jan Murray. Meredith Wilson. And my name, darlings, is Tallulah Bankhead. <laughs> Here it is, another Sunday. How quickly a week passes. I don't know where the days go. Last Sunday, after I finished the show, a bunch of us went out for dinner. Had a wonderful time. And I got in real early, 11 o'clock Tuesday morning. <laughs> Slept all day Tuesday and got up early Thursday morning, raring to go. Had a ravenous appetite, but couldn't find a thing in the house. Looked in every chandelier. <laughs> well, decided <laughs> Thank you. Decided to attend to some household duties, cleaned out all my closets, and sent everybody who was in their home. <laughs> I wrote chapter 14 in my autobiography. The phone rang, and I made a date for chapter 15. <laughs> well, that took care of Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and here it is Sunday again. I was really darling, I just don't know where the days go. Ah, but one thing I'm always sure of is our darling sponsor, the Reynolds Metals Company. They know where aluminum goes every day of every week. <laughs> well, Miss Bankhead, this is the week of the International Motorsport Show in New York. A wonderful display of the finest sports cars, and therefore a wonderful display of aluminum. Reynolds Aluminum. Special streamlined bodies made completely of aluminum. Many parts of the high-geared motors, also aluminum. And one of the largest trailers yet built, covered with Reynolds aluminum. Why so much aluminum? The answer is obvious, for aluminum is light, strong, easily adaptable to modern designs. That this International Motorsport Show should display so much aluminum is a salute to competition that brought production up, prices down. Competition started by the Reynolds Metals Company to make this the age of aluminum. Well, darlings, every week I get a lot of letters from people who listen to the show. Some of them have, have problems and they ask for my advice. And since we have such a diversified array of talent on the show this week, I thought our stars might be able to answer some of the letters. Fred Allen, here's one you can answer. It needs an expert on television. Oh, sister, have you got a wrong number? <laughs> the letter is from a Mr. Field in Baltimore, Maryland. He wants to know what is the best way to break into television. Well, I would suggest an ax. <laughs> Chop your way through the tube. Now, while you're chopping, if you suddenly strike water, do not be alarmed. You have merely made contact with a seltzer bottle on the Milton Pearl program. <laughs> Another way to get into television is to make an old motion picture. Or, if you are in no hurry, make a new motion picture and wait 20 years. <laughs> of course, the quickest way to get into television is to be born a bottle of beer or a dancing cigarette. <laughs> well, that takes care of Mr. Field. Good luck, Chester. <laughs> and now our next letter is from a girl in Topeka, Kansas. She says a salesman who came to Topeka recently told her if she ever came to New York, he could get her into a show on Broadway. Vivian Blaine, you're in a musical comedy on Broadway. What would be your advice? Should this young lady take this salesman's word for it and come to New York? Well, Tallulah, that guy sounds like quite a salesman. And if she's not careful, that salesman will be the death of her. I found out that when a man tells a girl he can get her into a show on Broadway, he means one of two things. 
The second thing is that he's got two tickets to the show. <laughs> well, that hasn't changed much since I come up from Alabama. <laughs> Well, now, this next letter is from a man in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, who wants to come to New York to open a nightclub, and he wants to know how to go about it. Jan Murray, you're an expert on nightclubs. How do you go about opening a nightclub? Well, I've never opened a nightclub. I close quite a few. <laughs> but all you have to do to open a nightclub is find a lot of smoke and build a room around it. And if this guy is living in Pittsburgh, he could open the biggest nightclub in the world. All he has to do is put a wall around the city and the Copacabana. Pittsburgh is born <laughs> And if you happen to be looking for a top comedian to play your club And the salary's big enough, I know a fellow named Jan Murray If the salary is small enough, I know Phil Forster <laughs> Well, uh, if you're looking for a top singer uh, I'll be glad to take the job Money is no consideration, I'll pay anything <laughs> Well, now, here's a strange letter from a girl in Boston, Massachusetts. She writes, Dear Miss Bankhead, I've been trying to get a man for a long time. I can answer that letter. Uh, wait a minute, Judy Canova. I haven't told you yet what her problem is. Well, what other problem is it? If I used to have that problem, I couldn't get me a man no how. That was my trouble. I didn't know how. <laughs> Instead of sashaying out there with them buttons and bowls, I was back at the barn slopping the hogs. <laughs> Didn't meet too many fellers that way, but I met a lot of interesting hogs. <laughs> but I solved my problem. I just decided that my career come first. I didn't need no fellers taking me to picture shows and going on hay rides. I'll oh, sorry, Bobtail. I got myself a lot of nice clothes, the store bought an automobile. I don't have to sit around making one myself. <laughs> That's three. I can go to the beauty parlor and get myself curried up any way I want to. I don't need no man sitting around holding my hand, buttering me up and kissing and hugging and... <laughs> and uh, who needs it? I, I'm happy like I am. And if that girl up in Boston is smart, she'll find happiness just the way I did. <laughs> Well, if I'd known this was for the Academy Award, I'd have done that speech myself. <laughs> well, now, here's a letter from a young man who has ambitions to become the top recording male singer in the country. Well, he has one of the qualifications. He's a male. And now, let me see. Johnny Johnson, you're a male. How about uh, giving this young man some advice, huh? Well, I certainly will, Tallulah. The first thing this fellow ought to do when he comes to New York is to buy himself a pair of tight shoes. Whatever his collar size is, get himself a shirt two sizes too small and go on a daily diet of malted milk and sour pickles. In three days, he'll be in such agony that he's essentially to become a top recording star when he sings songs like, If your sweetheart sends a letter of goodbye, it's no secret you feel better if you cry. Bravo. <laughs> Well, now, look, darling, I, I ad-lib, I know. I never cry when I sing. I can't say the same for the audience. Uh, but here's an interesting letter from a woman whose husband wants to become a comedian. Uh, should she let him give up his steady job and take the chance? Well, Portland, you ought to be able to answer that question. Yes, I can. For 23 years, I've been married to a man who wants to be a comedian. <laughs> you might as well let him do it. If you don't let him become a comedian, he'll become frustrated, unhappy, get high blood pressure and ulcers, and sit around the house all day complaining and doing nothing. Come to think of it, if you let him become a comedian, the same thing will happen. <laughs> oh, the big show that's going to go on at the Allen House tonight. Well, I have another letter here. It's from, um, um, oh dear, I can't make this out. Some foreign postmark. Oh, Brooklyn. Uh, <laughs> I have been listening to your show for months and I admire your diction. I have a Brooklyn accent and I would like to improve my speech. Well, now let me see. This letter ought to be for you, Phil Foster. For moi? <laughs> yeah, for you. Well, I got news for you. <laughs> 
I really can't see why you asked me to answer that sort of question. <laughs> but now you want to know how to get rid of his Brooklyn accent. Tell him to move. <laughs> what kind of get rid of the accent? He should wear it like a badge of honor. What's he gonna do? Go to Ebbets Field and say, Ralph Bronco is pitching? <laughs> and wait till you see what they do to him when he, instead of yelling, kill the umpire, he starts yelling, eradicate the arbitrator. <laughs> I didn't mean to upset you. Thank you. And now I think it's time for a song. I think it's time we heard, <laughs> I mean, the hood from Judy Canova. How about it, baby? Some of that real solid Canobian vocalizing. The song, Short and Bread. Meredith, darling, if you please. <laughs> Put on the lead, Mama's gonna make a little shortening bread. That ain't all she's gonna do. Mama's gonna make a little coffee too. Mama's little baby loves shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby loves shortening bread. Mama's little baby loves shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby loves shortening bread. Two little young laying in the bed. Heels cracked open like shopping bread. Bees, bees, <laughs> So I said, but I'm from well about the shopping bread. Mama's little baby never shopped and shopped and mama's little baby never shopped and bread. Woo! Mama's little baby never shopped and shopped and mama's little baby never shopped and bread. Every night before I go to bed. Covered for my shine in red. Grandma's old, can't make a bed, but she's full of bed for making shine in red. Mom, 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 Judy, you really put over a song, darling. <laughs> Dog Shuck and Stalili, that was nothing. Yeah, I know, but I try to be nice to my guests. <laughs> Have a glasses, darling. Oh, thank you very much. Hey, you know something? I've been studying you, Tallulah. Didn't you used to work in a jute mill down south? <laughs> you must be thinking of another Tallulah Bankhead, sugar child. <laughs> well, maybe so, but this here girl's name was Lily Bat. She married the foreman of this jute mill, Clem Davis. You sure do look and act just like Lily Bat Davis. <laughs> look, grand old Opry. <laughs> I want to be nice to you. This is your first trip up here, and I want to help you. You could be very attractive, you know, a very attractive woman if somebody showed you how to dress. Well, I've been studying the way you're dressed, Lily. That's sure some get up you got. <laughs> oh, darling, really, please, we don't say get up. Well, somebody better say get up to the top of your dress. Say, <laughs> <laughs> and did you know them shoes you're wearing has got holes in them? 
Judy, these are open-toed sandals. All glamorous women wear these. Yeah, when you wear them, it's glamorous. When I wear them, it's bunion. <laughs> Look, darling, uh, you're not back home now. While you're in New York, you ought to get yourself a dress like this and wear it back home to surprise the fellas. <laughs> if I wore a dress like that, there wouldn't be no surprises left for them. <laughs> <laughs> we live in a highly specialized age. I mean, if you want to get a man, you've got to advertise. If the package is wrapped attractively, you can always find a customer for the product, especially if you happen to be the large economy size. <laughs> You're still on the shelf. The luxury items move very slowly, darling. <laughs> and besides, the statistics show that in this country, for every man, there are three women. That's why you might be finding it rather difficult. Now, you take South America. Now, down there, it's easier. For every three women, there are one and a quarter men. Well, so long, Tallulah. Now, just a minute, Judy, where are you going? I'm going down after my Latin quarter. <laughs> oh, <laughs> now I sponsor the darling Reynolds Metals Company wants to tell us the latest news in architecture. They say here it will help me with my house haunting. I must have read that wrong. I mean house haunting. Yes, Miss Bankhead, America's architects and builders have been practically haunting the suppliers of aluminum. Reynolds Aluminum. There just seems to be no limit to the improvements made possible by this light, strong, rust-proof metal. One important example in building factories, hospitals, stores, is the aluminum curtain wall. Large panels made up of Reynolds aluminum on the outside and on the inside with insulation between that you just lift into place and hang on the building frame. Walls like this go up faster. They ensure long life, low maintenance, and save valuable floor space. And they have the modern look only aluminum gives. The curtain wall is just one of the modern construction methods made more efficient, more economical by aluminum. You'll see more and more examples as expanding aluminum production meets and surpasses the military needs that now come first. The Reynolds Metals Company, one of America's great producers of aluminum, again salutes the architectural profession, which always uses every means to build America better. Oh, uh, Tallulah. Yes, Portland. I'd like to ask you a question. Where do you buy your dresses? Well, why do you ask, darling? Well, I was talking to Fred about the dresses you wear, and he seemed to think they were very cheap. Cheap? Uh, what is he talking about? Well, he said your dresses are half off. <laughs> is that my cue? Because I didn't see it coming. I was so trying to feed you, Portland, I forgot my line. All right, you can tell Fred for me that my gowns are specially made for me, and you can also tell him that the part that's off costs more than the suits he wears. <laughs> didn't mean to offend you, Tallulah. I was just telling him I thought your gowns cost a lot of money, and I wonder what you do with your old dresses. And Fred said you wore them. What? Oh, you're fixing me up fine, Portland. If I, if I may intersperse a word in my defense, Tallulah. Miss Allen, sir, down in Alabama where I come from, an unshivered remark like that can only be settled on the field of honor, sir. Tallulah spoken like a true Southern gentleman. <laughs> What do you know about a southern gentleman, you Yankee? Well, it isn't my fault that I don't come from your part of the country, Tallulah. But for a prank of fate, you know, I might have been born in, in Alabama, too. <laughs> well, what do you mean, but for a prank of fate? Well, many years ago, my great-grandfather made a small fortune traveling through Alabama exhibiting a Republican in a revival tent. <laughs> When he returned home, my great-grandfather spoke so highly of Alabama that my grandfather decided to go there. At that time, my grandfather was living on a farm in New Hampshire. Well, they called it a farm. It was really a quarry with a layer of dust over it. <laughs> the land was so poor, my grandfather had to use a little fertilizer so that he could grow old on the place. <laughs> the hens had nothing to eat but gravel. When a hen laid an egg, the yolk would rattle. And all the vegetables grew very small on the farm. 
my grandfather raised the only one-eyed potatoes in the state of New Hampshire. <laughs> Little did he know that many years later in this same state, farmers could raise 40,000 votes for Eisenhower. <laughs> but my grandfather really didn't know anything about farming. He was a retired glass blower. And one day while he was blowing a greenhouse, <laughs> the, uh, the glass was red hot and my grandfather got the hiccups. Well, before he could stop hiccuping, he had blown 200 percolator tops. <laughs> now, unfortunately, this was before the coffee pot was invented. So they tried to sell the percolator tops to people with thyroid conditions to be used as monocles, you see. <laughs> Some of the, uh, the tops were sold to society matrons who like to serve individual radishes under glass. <laughs> Two of them they sold to Eddie Cantor as contact lenses, I remember. <laughs> but uh, my grandfather, my grandfather was finished as a glass blower. He went back to the farm despondent and started to drink. He used to say, I'll take a drink to steady myself, unquote. Sometimes he'd get so steady he couldn't even move. <laughs> he was buried three times by mistake. <laughs> and finally he was barred at the cemetery. <laughs> One time I remember my grandfather stopped drinking and joined Alcoholics Anonymous. After two days by sheer concentration, he subdued his willpower and was able to start drinking again. <laughs> Well, of course, the farm slowly went to pieces. It was about this time that my great-grandfather came back off the road with his revival tent and the Republican. My, uh, my grandfather, my great-grandfather told such glowing stories of Alabama, Southern hospitality and Southern comfort that my grandfather <laughs> and grandmother decided to go there. Well, they packed all of their worldly possessions, a pump handle and a picture of Lydia Pinkham. <laughs> And they left on a small a unicycle, they left New Hampshire. They said goodbye to their daughter, who later married a butcher and had three children all underweight. <laughs> and a small boy who looked like a liverwurst. <laughs> and they picked, later as they drove along, they picked up a covered wagon. And my grandfather made a little money knitting those old mottos. You know that you used to hang on the wall, the knitted mottos, home sweet home, you only live once, but if you work it right, once is enough. <laughs> if you think nothing is impossible, try to stand a worm on end. <laughs> well, after they'd been traveling for months, they arrived in New York City. And my grandfather said to a man on hos horseback, which a horseback, that's another animal, used to be in New York years ago. <laughs> my grandfather said, which way is Alabama? And the man turned around on his hus and said, follow me. So they did. And instead of ending up down south, they found themselves way out west in Wyoming. The man they had followed from New York City was Horace Greeley. So you see, Tallulah, if it wasn't for Horace Greeley, my grandfather and my grandmother would have found the right road and they'd have gone to Alabama. Now, I would have been born there, possibly a girl, and tonight, instead of standing here reading these blank pages, I would be standing over at your microphone with my hair tumbling down over my shoulders, talking with a southern accent and known to the vast radio audience as the glamorous and unpredictable Tallulah Allen. Now, that's my Well, that's the longest apology for not being born a Southerner I ever heard. <laughs> now I know what happened. The North didn't win that war. They just talked us out of it. <laughs> but I think we've had enough talk for the moment. Let's have some music from a handsome and talented lad named Johnny Johnston. Johnny, who was recently starred in a beautiful Broadway musical, A Tree Grows in Brooklyn, has chosen a song from that hit. The scene where he comes home to find his poor wife on the roof scrubbing the mats. In the song, he makes her a lot of promises, which he knows he will never be able to keep. The song, I will buy your star. Meredith, darling, if you please. <laughs> chance is due to every man one more chance that's it 
It's not too late yet. We'll be living on some grand estate yet. You'll see an automobile. So Francie gets some air. A coat made of seal skin is what my wife will wear. Seal skin isn't good enough. Ermine isn't good enough. Buckets full of diamonds aren't good enough To show you what you're worth There's not enough to do There's nothing on this earth Good enough for you I'll have to do my shopping Up there in the blue Just a star, but the best one in the sky. You'll have a cloud to sleep on, a cloud as light as an angel's sigh. A fine silver chain made from the rain of a summer. Afternoon, I'll buy you a star, my darling. But I won't rest until I buy the moon. I buy you a star. A summer afternoon, I'll buy you a star, my darling, but I won't rest until of a beautiful song. And what's this? Oh, a message from our darling sponsor saying, men wanted? Well, darlings, how about sending me the overflow? <laughs> well, Miss Bankhead, right now, there is no overflow of men at the Reynolds Metals Company. Because of rapid expansion, we need more trained engineers. Right now, there are many opportunities for engineers interested in joining their future with the future of the expanding aluminum industry with one of America's great aluminum companies. Write to General Employment Manager, Reynolds Metals Company, Richmond, 19, Virginia. That's Richmond, 19, Virginia. The Reynolds Metals Company, pioneers of progress through aluminum. And now, before we go to Act Two, I just want to ring my chimes. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. This is the big show, Act Two. And here is Tallulah Bankhead talking to Johnny Johnston. That was a beautiful song you sang to that girl, Johnny. What was the name of it again? I'll Buy You a Star. Ah, uh -huh, isn't that sweet? Would you buy me a star, Johnny? I sure I would. Okay, the star I want is Gary Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a lovely song. Could you teach me to sing it, darling? Well, I don't think so, Tallulah. 
Why do you say that? Have you ever heard me sing? No, but I've spoken to a few survivors. <laughs> well, I'm going to sing for you right now. Well, I'll be seeing you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I've just had a request for I'll be seeing you. <laughs> I'll be seeing you in all your familiar places. Hey, Johnny. Yeah, Jan? What'd you do to that poor girl? I didn't do anything. Then why is she crying? That this heart of mine embraces all day. She isn't crying, that's singing. Singing? Sounds more like a B-29. With a voice like that, it's a wonder she got to B-29. In that small cafe, the park across the way, the children's carousel. The chastity, the worship well. With that voice, who could be she who could she be wishing well? In every lovely summer day, in everything that's bright and gay, I'll always think of you that way. She must use the Holland Tunnel for a pitch pipe. <laughs> I'll find you in the morning sun and with the night in you. Johnny, talk to me. I think I just lost the use of my left ear. <laughs> I'll be looking at the moon, but I'll be seeing. You. <laughs> well, Johnny, I want your candid opinion. How do you like my voice? Now tell me, how do you like my voice? Now tell me straight from the shoulder. That's where your voice sounds like it's coming from, straight from the shoulder. <laughs> Say, wait a minute, what do you kids want? Really want to hear some singing? Well, That's my business, you know. Just step aside, please, would you please? Ladies and gentlemen, I have many requests this evening, but I'm going to sing a song myself. And uh, a song that I think will never die until... <laughs> yes, all right, Miss Bankett. I, I asked you to sit. I meant the chair. Uh, a song that I think will never die until I do it now, and then it's got a fighting chance. The ever-popular, always beautiful, Laugh Clown Laugh. Oh, I do hope you like this song. Life is a play, we all play a part, the love of the dream. Life is a play, life is a play, and we all... Life is a play... All right, right with me. Don't be nervous, don't be nervous now. Life is a play, and we all... Life is a play, and we all play... All right, boy, all together in tempo now, here. Life is a play, and we... Life is a play... Don't be nervous, man. Right with me, here, now. Life is a play, and we all play the part. The lover and dreamer... The... Are you sure you got my music out there? <laughs> Good lad, play good. You know, Miss Bankett has no sense of humor with these mistakes. There are three comedians warming up in the lobby now. <laughs> Sign a peculiar contract on this show. Your option comes up every eight minutes here. <laughs> NBC takes no chances. <laughs> they better not say one word to me. That NBC better not say one word to me about tonight's performance. I'll buy this place, make it a supermarket. <laughs> I saved my money. That's where the dough is anyway. Supermarkets, where the price of food's going up. My wife goes shopping now. She doesn't count money anymore. She weighs it. Give me eight pounds of money. I'm going shopping, dog. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's the only argument I have with my wife lately. Give me more money. I need more money for the table. Give me a bigger allowance. I need more money for the table. I say, how much could a table eat, for heaven's sake? <laughs> I'm giving you 2,000 a week now. Isn't that enough? She says, no, we got a child. I said, let's eat him one day. What, do we need food all the time? She said, you think you sound smart, don't you? Well, next time you do the shopping, you'll see how expensive everything is. A British girl. <laughs> well, this morning, I went to the supermarket for the first time in years. I'd like a dollar's worth of potatoes. Sorry, Mac, we don't slice them. <laughs> I went to another counter. I said, may I have 25 cents worth of Swiss cheese? You wrapped up five holes. <laughs> I saw a 22-pound turkey buying a man this morning. <laughs> so play good. Play good, you foolish piano player. This may mean the White House. <laughs> Life is a play, we all play a part. The love of the dream of the clown. I beat you by a mile, work fast. Boy, work fast. 
The leverage people, they're always in tears, but the cloud spreads such a roo. Are you playing with your elbows tonight? <laughs> it's a rough audience. They'll form a posse, come up here and get me. Light. Take it from where it says, with him. <laughs> Life with a smile is a life worthwhile. Are you packing, Mr. Johnston? <laughs> through, through. So laugh until that kite curtain falls. <laughs> I get for talking to Phil Foster before the show. Even though you're only e, even though you're only me, e, e, you're starting again. Even though, even e, all together. Now here, right with me, boy. Even though you're all right, boy. Don't be nervous. Right together, in tempo. Even though you're only me, do you know Claire Deloon? <laughs> Where is she living now? Do you? Yeah, I've Jam, never Jam, spent an Jam. evening like this. What's, What's the matter, the Johnny? I don't see. You're working so hard up here. What's yes. Your, what seems to be the trouble, well, boy? What seems to be the trouble, boy? What seems to be the trouble, boy? Aren't you listening? For you, they played so beautiful, Lee. <laughs> and uh, while I'm on, they can't find a note or oh, anything. Wait I, it's a minute, a disgrace. Jam. Really, you shouldn't make complaints. After all, you're you're a fine comedian. You can get up here and get laughs with no trouble at all. I what agree. are you worrying about singing for? This is so ridiculous. Well, that's going to be my new racket, Johnny. From now on, I'm singing. No more, no more jokes. Nothing. Not Just you singing. Too, no. Yes, me too. Yes. No. Yes. Tell jokes. I've What's studied this thing. I've studied it. Who do you think makes all the money in show business? Singers. Last last week, I accidentally saw your salary check. Oh, you did. Then I looked at mine. Yes. There's a big difference, you know, boy. <laughs> So I tore up the joke book and now I'm taking singing lessons. Oh, you're gonna be a singer? That's right, I wanna make the money, the loot. You know, the green stuff with the dead people's pictures on it? <laughs> well, it's gonna be my new hobby, collecting all that stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, I, I think you could be a singer, I but think so. you I say think you've so. been studying. Oh, taking lessons, one of the finest schools in America. I'm studying at the Beethoven School of Music. The Beethoven School Shit. of Music? Do you have a good teacher? Sure, Sam Beethoven. <laughs> Life is a flame. Sure. Yeah, I'd like to hear a sample of your voice. Well, would you like to hear a sample yes. of my voice? Yes, good. I just want to hear the tone. You yes, see. good. I'll sing a note and you repeat after me. Would oh, you hit me a C? Please? You want to test my pitch? Yes. Sir. Oh, perfect. All right, you sing this. Yes. Blah. Oh, now you hit that note. Uh, nothing to it, lad. Nothing. Would you give me the same note, please? Blah. No, a little higher. <laughs> yes. Oh, see, you're Sam. a tenor. You're What's a tenor. That? If you say so. Yes. Yeah. yeah. You, give I, me a D up there. A D. Yeah. All right. Blah. Now that's the one. Come on. That was a D? Yes. Give me a W. <laughs> Just move the balcony back, please. Matt, here it is. <laughs> I don't like the song. See, you picked no, the wrong type of tune. Do. Now, yeah, it's not it my nothing. type. It doesn't fit my no, style. No, it isn't the song. I, I can see your fault. You have what we call faulty tone production. Is that the truth, John? Yes. I didn't know that. Yes, there's one thing you... Faulty tone production. <laughs> yeah. you, you must realize that in singing, in singing, I want you to remember this yes, always. Yes. Breathing is very important. <laughs> Breathing is very important, yes, John? Yes. I'm glad you told me I was going to give it up for a few weeks, but if you feel it's important, I'll just keep breathing. No, what I mean to say is the method in which you breathe. Now, you take the deep breath. Deep take breath, the deep yes. breath. Yeah, now, you must breath. breathe from the diaphragm. diaphragm. <laughs> please, I'm very ticklish. Please, boy, please. But I'm willing to help yes, you, I you sing yes. from, from the, the diaphragm. diaphragm. Yes. I'm not please. wearing my money belt, boy. No, please. No. The, breath, yes. the breath goes yes. up through the vocal cords, vocal cords yes. and you sing forward yes. in the mosque, you see. In the mosque? In the mosque. You must sing forward in the mosque. John, this is my farce. <laughs> this is my whole farce right here. This is my chine, my neos, and my fori hey yet. <laughs> the mosque I threw away last, Halloween's do. And right now, look, right now you're violating one of the basic principles of being a singer. Is that you the truth? Oh, yes. To be a comedian, you can throw yourself around the stage, make yeah. faces, but to sing, you must have a certain amount of dignity and poise. Yeah. I would say that you are sadly lacking in, shall we say, culture. <laughs> Culture? I didn't know that. No, I didn't yes, know yes. that. I would say that you also lack a certain amount of, shall we say, uh, savoir faire. Savoir faire? Yeah. I haven't even got subway fare. I don't know what you're doing. <laughs> All I want to do is sing a song. You're making a big unit out All of right, it. All right, you'd like to sing a yes, song? Yes, I want you to hear my voice. It bar. just so happens I have in the music books here a, a, a duet of mine from last year. Do you remember the song, Sam song? Yes, yes, yes. remember very well. All right, well, we have a little duet. Would you like to sing it with me? You, you, you. You, you mean you'd let me jern you? Better than that, Jan. You will sing the lead. I'll just sing a few notes oh, to fill in. You. Have you got a part for me? I've got a part. Good. Did you have that have part? part? Here it is, right. Oh, is this my part? Yes, that's Good. It. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty, eh, 
eight pages. <laughs> the, the big it's, part? It sounds like it's Sam, you made the song too long, it looks no, like, you know? No, this is Sam's right. song. Now, you're 12 already... pages. Yes. You got your part? I have my all part. All right, right. You got yes, your yes, part. Right here. Oh, just a little part. Well, I just have a couple of words. Yeah, just see. a little word. All, all right. right. I'll right. take you're it over. Right. I want you to listen to my voice. Would you give me a little bell note there? Yeah. That's nice. Now, I sing the first couple of words, and you take it. And then I come right in. And it's all yours. All right. All right. Don't worry, I won't let you. All right. All right. Here's a happy tune that will bring you a smile all the while when you croon it. You're really in style, and the title is Samson. That's very nice. Eh? <laughs> Catchy as can be, with a sly little beat, and the melody sweet keeps you tapping your feet, and the title is Samson. That's very nice, Jack. <laughs> Nothing on your mind but the news of the day and the bills you must pay keeps your hair turning gray, but you're still humming Samson. You can call them. Say it makes you grin, gets under your skin, as only a song can do. Right, people, I change a lyric. You know and remind me You've got all that written down here, kid? Sam song. Keep it there must be other words Everyone to this. see yeah. has a story to tell or a gimmick to sell, but agrees that it's swell and it's really a grand song. Just thought I'd ad lib, that's all. I'd so forget your troubles. You sure this is smile, the lead that I'm doing? You'll find you'll never go wrong. Nice, if you'll learn to croon like a lark in the park who is making his mark serenade in the dark with a chorus of Sam song. No, Sam song. Sam no, song. If right. you'll learn to the croon a happy tune, they call it Sam song. Well, now going from the ridiculous. From the ridiculous to the sublime, I think we ought to hear from the beautiful Miss Vivian Blaine. Vivian has chosen for her selection on the big show one of the dearest ballads ever written, Lover. Meredith, darling, if you please. <laughs> Thank you. 
fine, darling. Oh, what a singer you are, Vivian. How's your show, uh, The King and I? Uh, <laughs> Tallulah, I'm not in The King and I. Oh, I mean South Pacific. Tallulah, I'm not in South Pacific. Oklahoma? I'm not in Oklahoma. Well, I can wish, can't I? <laughs> I'm in Guys and Dolls. Oh, yes, of course. And how's your show doing, darling? Oh, just fine. And how's your show? It pays to be ignorant. <laughs> oh, what a Sunday this is turning out to be. Tallulah, what's this I hear about you going on television? Oh, yes, darling. I'm thinking of it for next season. A lot of people complain they can't see me on radio. Yes. A lot of people have told me they can't see you on radio at all. Uh, <laughs> isn't she blonde? <laughs> Uh, I might be able to give you some tips, Tallulah. I'm on television. No, I don't roller skate, darling. <laughs> you don't understand. <laughs> uh, Tallulah, I have a regular show, and I might be able to help you. Oh, well, it's very sweet and sweet, but I don't need any help, darling. I've been watching television every night. I get the idea. Oh, well, uh, did you watch it last night? Uh, no, my set was broken last night. Oh, well, I was on television last night. Oh, was that you, sweetie? I thought my set was broken. <laughs> well, what sort of a show do you do, Vivian? Well, I do a 15-minute show three times a week. 15 minutes? Mm -hmm. It takes me longer than that just to read off my cast. <laughs> you can do nothing in 15 minutes. Some people I know take an hour and a half to do nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing? What do you think has kept me way up above everybody else all these years? Hot air. <laughs> well, you could use a little of that hot air to get you off the ground, Buster. <laughs> Tell me, Tallulah, uh, what sort of a television show are you going to do? Oh, the typical divine Tallulah Bankhead show. Ooh. Oh, uh, just long. It's going to be an hour show. Besides that, I'm going to do the big show on radio. Radio and television? Huh. There'll be no getting away from you, will there? I must catch that little show you're doing. Uh, what time is it on? 7.30. 7.30? Don't tell me you're Dave Galloway. <laughs> no, 7.30 at night. Three nights a week. Three nights a week? Oh, I must see that. The movies are going to seem better than ever. <laughs> hey, uh, Adelaide. How are you, Addie? Oh, hello, Philly. How are you? Uh, Phil, just a minute. You're mistaken. This is Vivian Blaine. What kind of Vivian Blaine? I got news for you. <laughs> this is Adelaide of Guys and Doll. Hiya, Doll. How you been keeping yourself? On my salary. Ain't it awful? <laughs> if I may project a question, Philly, how have you been? Me? Mm-hmm. Ah! Oh, I'm sorry to hear you're not working and that you don't feel well and you're having trouble at home and your brother is mixed up with that dreadful girl again. Ah, eh, means all that. <laughs> well, I better get into this. When in Rome, do the Dodgers do? <laughs> Lose. Oh, uh, Philly, what's the uh, good void? To Lula, you? I thought you came from Alabama. I got news for you. <laughs> Alabama Avenue. <laughs> no, kid, Lanceman. <laughs> well, were you in that street fight between Alabama Avenue and Bushwick Avenue? You remember when we got those boxes from the oranges and we made sticks out of them and beat up those Bushwicks? You remember the war between the crates? <laughs> I wasn't there, I just hoid about it. So tell me, Adelaide, you married or anything? Just anything. <laughs> and how about you, Philly? You should be married by now. Married? What's the matter? You got rocks in your head? Stop beating your gum. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the mystery boy. <laughs> the two real Brooklynites and the ersatz Brooklynite are talking what is known in Brooklyn as the mother tongue. In Brooklyn, father rarely gets a chance to use the tongue unless he slices it to make a sandwich. <laughs> I will translate what they are saying into English. I am qualified for this Herculean task because I once went to a dentist who was born in Brooklyn, and two upper molars have been replaced in my mouth by a Brooklyn bridge. <laughs> I, uh, seen you in Guys and Dolls, kid. Oh, did you like me, Philly? Liked you? Mm-hmm. I got news for you. You're murder. Murder? 
Murder is a word which in Brooklyn has been incorporated into the language. Murder Incorporated is Brooklyn's leading undertaking establishment. The only undertakers in the world who call for and deliver. Hey, Billy, what's this I hear about you going around with this Tallulah bimbo? Me with Tallulah? Yeah. Get out of here! (laughs) (laughs) Your mother takes numbers. Miss Bankhead means that Mr. Foster's mother teaches mathematics at Brooklyn College. So what's the matter with you, Tallulah? You're a bargain? (laughs) All of a sudden, she's hoity-toity. She may be hoity, but she'll never see toity again. (laughs) Says who? Says me. Yeah. Yeah. They are now quoting from Noel Coward. (laughs) He is the proprietor of the famous Coward's shoe stores. So tell me, Philly, how did the Dodgers look this year? It's in the bag. In the bag is Brooklynese for second place. (laughs) Hey, what was the matter with them bums last year? Bums. In Brooklyn, nine bums refers to the Dodgers. One bum refers to a brother-in-law. How about it, Tallulah? We're gonna win this year? I got news for you. <laughs> I went with DeRosha to the Giants. Oh! What she said. Go wash your mouth out with soap and water. Ah, your mother wears army shoes. <laughs> Miss Bankhead means Miss Blaine's mother is a member of the WAC. A whack in Brooklyn is a schizophrenic. Hey, Addy, remember when you and me used to sing on the corner in front of the candy store? Uh-huh. Candy store is the Brooklyn Cultural Center. <laughs> hey, Philly, how about you, me, you and me singing a song right now? I gotta ask the boss. How about it, Tallulah? You know, darlings, I'm just confused enough at this point to say yes. Meredith, give them a chorus or two of Here Comes the Springtime, if you will be so kindly. If you'll be so kindly in Brooklyn means play loud. springtime and there goes my heart oh Billy high Billy hey all my resistance is falling apart oh Billy high Billy hey sweet evening breeze go away if you please a lilac and smilox unhand me fresh morning do you are soaking me through with feelings that don't understand me after the robin the cricket will start Oh, Here comes the springtime, and there goes my heart. Oh, Here comes the springtime, and there goes my heart. Oh, I'm a Magellan without any chart. Oh, Dilly, hi, Dilly, hey. Jam bowling lamb, I invite you to scram. You heifers, please stop with that low Lightning bugs like my libido each night. Hey, hummingbird, watch where you're going. After the bullfrog, the lovebirds will start. Oh, Dilly, hi, Dilly, hey. Here comes the springtime, and there goes my heart. Oh, And there goes my heart here. I'm hoping you'll grab it and run. Thank you, Texan Jinx. <laughs> Everybody who comes on this show sings a duet. No one will ever sing one with me. Hey, remember me? Oh, of course I do, Judy. Well, it's been so long since I was up here, I don't seem to remember you. <laughs> What's your name again? Clara Kimball Young. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, well, I'll sing with the three of you. <laughs> you will? Oh, finally. Oh, thank you, darling. And I'll tell you what, you're such a wonderful yodeler. Now, that's one phase of singing I haven't tried yet. Could you teach me how to yodel? Uh, how do you get that yodel sound? Well, let's see. Now, it's sort of a kind of a... Oh. How can I describe it? It's it sort of like shifting from first into second without putting your foot on the clutch. <laughs> but that way you strip the gears. Well, that's the yodel. Look, I'll show you. Totally. Oh, that's beautiful. May I try that? Why, sure. <laughs> Any of you folks in the first five rows wearing your Sunday best better move back there. <laughs> Line spray sets in. Go ahead, Tallulah Bell. Now, like this. <laughs> well, how is that? I think you shifted from first into reverse. <laughs> now, now, do it easy, like this. See? Uh, you haven't by any chance got an instrument hidden down in there, have you, got it? <laughs> oh, well, here goes. If I'm not back in five days, notify next of kin. Would you give me that yodel once again, Judy, please? Okay. I'd lay you. I'd lay you. <laughs> oh, it's not good. They just laugh at me. Well, don't you mind. Let them laugh. Don't you even worry if they laugh. <laughs> now you try it again, honey, like this. I'd lay you. I'd lay you. <laughs> you sure you ain't got an instrument hid down in there like a bus saw or something? <laughs> I, I better give up. I'll never do it. Of course, if I ever uh, get a dramatic part in a play that requires yodeling, I'll be in trouble, but I'll have to take my chances. However, as long as your tonsils are in yodeling position, how about giving us a real sample? Well, if Meredith will give me a key, I don't like to sing just raw. <laughs> <laughs> Times. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company. This is the Big Show, Act Three. This portion brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfields are much milder with an extraordinarily good taste and, most important, no unpleasant aftertaste. By Anison, for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. And by Dentine, the gum with breathtaking flavor, and Beeman's Pepsin, the gum that's great to chew and good for your digestion, too. And here now is Tallulah Bankhead. Well, darling, the weather last week turned out so divinely that I began thinking of the summer and the swimming pool I have up at my country place, and so I decided to take some swimming lessons. Oh, no more of what I did last year, filling the pool up with champagne instead of water. <laughs> Of course, you can float more easily on champagne than you can on water, but they revoked my liquor license, <laughs> and we're going to have water. So I decided to learn how to swim like a champion. I didn't care if it took me all afternoon. <laughs> well, I made an appointment at this uh, indoor pool, you see, and there I met the swimming instructor. Girls, I wish you could have seen him. Six feet two, sitting down. <laughs> And the longest, most beautiful wavy hair you've 
ever seen on his chest. <laughs> his head was bald. <laughs> but in the water, he looked like a fish. As a matter of fact, he looked like a fish out of the water. <laughs> so naturally, I did the sensible thing. I asked for another instructor. Well, this one was really something. A magnificent jungle beast. Tall. Suntan, just back from Florida. He swam up. <laughs> His name was Jim, uh, Jim Salmon. <laughs> and before he got through with me, they nearly canned him. Oh, but that's not <laughs> that. <laughs> well, darling, the lesson began when he asked me if I was afraid of water. Well, I said, well, darling, I'm not afraid of it. I just don't approve of it. <laughs> Do I what? Oh, my dear, like a fish. What? Oh, no, darling, I don't swim at all. <laughs> well, that's why I'm here. Well, I thought maybe you could teach me some of the holes. Now, I mean some of the strokes. <laughs> now, how do we start? I lean forward like this. You're holding me now, aren't you, darling? Yes, good. When I put my arms where your arms are... Oh, I see. Oh, that isn't difficult. Oh, well, let's do that again, shall we? <laughs> oh, thank you, sweetie. Now your arms again, I put my arms around yours, and I move like this, is that it? <sighs> How long has this been going on? <laughs> uh, shall we try once more? Oh, in water this time. <laughs> oh, very well, into the water we go. Oh, this is invigorating. Oh, I should have changed into a bathing suit. <laughs> oh, well, it's too late now. Uh, maybe my slacks will shrink down to bathing suit size. <laughs> Uh, look, darling, you don't think these open-toed shoes would let in too much water, do you? <laughs> oh, that's nice. Well, let's get started. Oh, do you happen to have a cigarette, darling? <laughs> no smoking in the pool. Oh, I suppose they're afraid we'll set the water on fire. Uh, <laughs> all right, let's try it now. I put my arms like this. You put your arms out where they were. Oh, this is divine. <laughs> is that all there is to it? Kick? Why should I kick? <laughs> I like this. <laughs> oh, kick my feet, why don't you say so? All right, I'll kick my feet. <laughs> there you are. Oh, darling, I'm so sorry. Did I kick you hard? Well, your nose is bleeding. <laughs> and you seem to be losing your tan. Oh, there goes your tattoo. <laughs> darling, where are you going? Don't go down there. Come back up. Oh, that's it. Now, take a deep breath. Uh, now, what do I do now? Uh, darling, I'm talking to you. Uh, don't go down there again. I'm paying for this lesson. You keep disappearing. <laughs> Is there somebody else down there you're giving a lesson to on my time? <laughs> oh, here you are. Well, now you stay up here. Now, the next thing I'd like to learn... Darling, you're not going down there again. <laughs> that makes three times you've done that to me. If you don't tell me what to do now, I will never speak to you again. Oh, what do I do? Well, darling, if you're just gonna lie there and say, glove, glove, I'll simply have to get another instructor, that's all. Good God. <laughs> the mask is off. The mask is off in cigarette advertising. Chesterfield is first to name all of its ingredients, and here they are. The right combination of the world's best tobaccos, pre-tested by laboratory instruments for the most desirable smoking qualities. And Chesterfield keeps these tobaccos tasty and fresh with tried and tested moistening agents. Pure natural sugars, chemically pure, harmless, far more costly glycerol, nothing else. Only these are entirely safe for use in the mouth, as proved by over 40 years of continuous use in tobacco products. And remember this, Chesterfields are wrapped in pure white cigarette paper, the best that money can buy. Now, we name our ingredients because we think every smoker ought to know what makes Chesterfield the best possible smoke, what makes Chesterfield much milder, with an extraordinarily good taste and no unpleasant aftertaste. Visit your dealer and sound off for Chesterfield. Do it today. <laughs> Now, darlings, it's time for Meredith Wilson and the Ockerton Chorus. Meredith has chosen the great Negro spiritual, Joshua, fit the battle of Jericho. Meredith, if you please, sir. <laughs> Battle of Jericho, 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 just hit the battle of Jericho and the 
again, the young man who's made such a hit with our audiences this past season. I've got news for you. <laughs> it's Phil Foster. What's going on, Phil? Well, Tallulah, I got a little present for you. My mother wants to show her appreciation because you've been so nice to me. Here. Oh, that's very sweet. What did you put in the box? It's a piece of wedding cake. Oh, I see. Your mother's hinting again, huh? What kind of hinting? It's a piece of cake from her wedding. <laughs> Uh, really? Uh, how long ago was she married? 35 years ago. <laughs> She's sending me a 35-year-old piece of cake? All right, so you use it as penicillin. <laughs> Tula, I, I, I just got to tell you what happened between me and my mother. I called her up and I said, Mom, I'm back with the big show. And my mother said, the circus? <laughs> I said, Ma, the big show with Tula Bankhead. And my mother said, I know Honolulu very well and it's a circus. I said, Ma, the big show, the radio show. Ma, Ma, turn off the television set and listen to me. <laughs> Finally, she said, Big Shot, I got a son who's a very big actor. Oh, boy, what a big shot. I said, what's wrong? She said, everybody's now going to television. My son's first going on radio. <laughs> television, you know something? Television has ruined everything. Take the corner candy store. Today, people go in there and just buy candy. Years ago, the candy store was a meeting place. If you had a problem, you didn't go to a doctor or a lawyer. You went to the corner. The fellows could figure it out for you. <laughs> I know one guy. One day, he couldn't pay rent. So he got to the corner, and the fellows told him what to do. They said, move. <laughs> On the corner, the boys could figure out anything except how to get a job. <laughs> and I can remember some morning, I'd be laying in bed, and my mother would come over to me, stand by the bed, and tenderly say, bum. <laughs> Two o'clock in the afternoon, the sun is shining. How could you lay in bed all day? And I'd say, why, you think it's easy? <laughs> Boy, and I miss those old days. I miss it so much, I'm probably the only guy in the whole world that ever decided to try to go back to them. <laughs> no kidding. A couple of weeks, I got on the subway, and uh, I headed for Brooklyn. And while I was going back there, I began to think about the guys, a guy like Bunky. You know, every block in the world's got a guy like Bunky. He gets blamed for everything. If we were making noise in front of a candy store, you know, and we usually did plenty of noise. Mm. Suddenly the window would open up in the third floor. A woman would stick her head out and say, if you don't get away from downstairs, I'll throw down water. And we'd say, you'd like to see her do it? <laughs> then she'd throw down the water, and who would it hit? Bunky. <laughs> the 
middle of the whole thing, out comes the candy store owner, and he starts to yell at us, off the corner, you bums. Bums? You're going to grow up to be gangsters, that's all. Bums? I know that you stole the candy and you robbed the machines and you took the paper and I heard it. And who would he be pointing at? One fella, Bunky. <laughs> when I got back to the corner, I finally found out what happened to Bunky. He now owns the candy store. <laughs> <laughs> while I was there, I ran into another friend of mine, Brillahead. I said, Brillahead, you remember me? Billy Foster. Philly. Phil. Monk. He said, Monk, how do you like it, my old pal from the third grade? He said, what are you doing now? I said, I'm an actor. I said, what are you doing now? He said, I'm still in the third grade. <laughs> then we had another pal. Oh, this guy was the greatest. A guy called Angles. This man, I'll tell you the truth, in school, he was the smartest guy that ever lived. He always kept getting A, A, A in school. I never saw a guy get so many A's. A, A, A. I finally found out what happened to him. He's now working for the A, A, A. <laughs> And I can remember on Saturday night, boy, that was it. We didn't have no television set. We had a different game. We had the telephone. That was some game. We used to meet Saturday night after we took our baths, and uh, we'd hang around for half an hour because we didn't recognize each other. We were so clean. <laughs> and our game was the telephone. We'd, we'd make up, who should we call tonight? We'd spend five hours calling people. Who should we call tonight? Big games. Vincent, we'd call the guy in the next block, the candy store. We'd say, hello. Is this Needleman's candy store? Have you got Moxie in a bottle? You have? Then why don't you let him out? <laughs> oh, we call up and say, this the gas works? It is. Can you see the lamp post on the corner? Is it lit? Then why don't you climb up the post and blow it out? <laughs> oh, big laughs like that. <laughs> well, that, I tell you, one game we used to do was to call a girl. I was the guy who always did that because I was the best blind date caller in the whole neighborhood. <laughs> I'd say, who got a good number? You? What's her name? Shirley? Give me the number. Watch me get back the nickel. Call the operator. I say, excuse me, operator. I've been dialing Dickens 2, 2617. I seem to be getting the wrong number. Could you kindly retain my nickel and uh, give me the right number? What do you mean you mail it to me? I need the money now. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Hello, Shirley? This is not Shirley, where's Shirley? She went to the drugstore. Who's this, her girlfriend? But what do you look like? <laughs> five foot two, eyes of blue, blonde hair? Oh man, that's for me. <laughs> Never mind what I look like, I like what you look like. You look great, yeah. Listen, uh, me, I'm, uh, I'm in from the coast, yeah. I, 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 uh, Coney Island. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, don't laugh, it's a big joke. Listen, can I see it tonight? Go walking or something? My name is Phil. No kidding. You got a brother by the same name? What's your name? Gene? Yeah, that's why I got a sister by the same name. <laughs> yeah, where do you live? Yeah? Listen, tell mom I'll be home at 8 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> well, One of the greatest games we had took six guys to play this game. Boy, it was the greatest game. We pick out a name in a book called, like, a guy, let's say, Callahan. We call him up and say, hello, is this Mr. Callahan? He say, yes. He say, is Melvin home? He say, there's no Melvin here, and he hang up. Then another guy will call him five minutes later. Hello, is this the Callahan residence? He say, yes. Uh, I'd like to talk to Melvin. He say, there's no Melvin here. And we do this five times in a row, and everybody's saying, hello, Mr. Callahan, I'd like to talk to Melvin. He say, finally, the fifth guy, he go crazy. There's no Melvin here. The sixth guy will call up and say, hello, Mr. Callahan. He said, yes, yeah. this is Melvin. You got any messages for me? <laughs> this television. Uh, I'll stick to the telephone. <laughs> the next time you suffer from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia, take Anison. You'll bless the day you heard of this incredibly fast way to relieve these pains. Now, the reason Anison is so wonderfully fast-acting and effective is this. Anison is like a doctor's prescription. That is, Anison contains not just one, but a combination of medically proven active ingredients in easy-to-take tablet form. Thousands of people have received envelopes containing Anison tablets from their own dentist or physician, and in this way discovered the incredibly fast relief Anison brings from pains of headache, neuritis, or neuralgia. So the next time a headache strikes, 
Take Anacin for this wonderfully fast relief. Anacin, A-N-A-C-I-N. Anacin comes in handy boxes of 12 and 30, economical family-sized bottles of 50 and 100. Get Anacin at any drug counter. Well, darlings, every once in a while on this show, we do a song written by Lynn Murray called I Wish I Was. All the members of our cast come up with their secret ambitions. This is a lot of fun and really quite revealing. So let's hear what the secret desires of our guests are this week. Meredith, if you'll set us up musically, we will begin. I hope it'll be deep. Tell us what you'd like to be. I hope it'll be deep. Tell Tallulah what you'd like to be. All right, let's hear from you, Phil Foster. What do you wish you was? I wish I was the manager of the bums. Of the bums. I wish I was the manager of the bums. Of the bums. If I was the manager of the bums when we played the Giants, we'd all have guns. I wish I was <laughs> the manager of the bums. I hope it'll be me. Tell us what you'd like to be. I hope it'll be me. Tell Tallulah what you'd like to be. All right, who's next? How about you, Johnny Johnson? What do you wish you were? I wish I was. A sponsor on TV. TV! I wish I was a sponsor on TV. TV! If I was a sponsor on TV, I'd turn around and hire me. I wish I was a sponsor on TV. I hope it'll be Tell Tallulah what you'd like to be. Paul and Harbor, how about you, honey? Uh, what do you wish you were? I wish I was Nay Mary Livingston, folks. Livy, Livy. I wish I was Nay Mary Livingston, folks. Livy, Livy. If I was Nay Mary Livingston, folks, it'd be easier to laugh at my husband's jokes. I wish I was <laughs> Nay Mary Livingston, folks. I hope it'll be me. Tell Tallulah what you'd like to be. Okay, Jan Murray, you big, handsome brute, what do you wish you were? I wish I was a string of pearls by heck. By heck! I wish I was a string of pearls by heck. By heck! If I was a string of pearls by heck, I'd hang around Tallulah's neck. I wish I was a string of pearls by heck. I hope it'll be Well, next up to bat is our very own Meredith Wilson. Meredith, what do you wish you were? Uh, well, sir, Miss Bankhead. <laughs> I wish I was a frog, and that's no joke. No joke! I wish I was a frog, and that's no joke. No joke! If I was a frog, and that's no joke, I wouldn't mind Tallulah's croak. I wish I was a frog, and that's no joke. I hope it'll be deep. Tell Tallulah what you'd like to be. Well, we haven't heard from you, uh, Judy Canova. You've got to be wishing you was somebody else. I wish I was the MC of this show. This show. I wish I was the MC of this show. This show. If I was the MC of this show, I'd sure tell Tallulah where she could go. I wish I was <laughs> the MC of this show. <laughs> Blaine, what are you sitting over there looking so smug and beautiful about? What do you wish you were? I wish I was a girl named Jeannie Crane. Jeannie Crane. I wish I was a girl named Jeannie Crane. Jeannie Crane. Now if I was a girl named Jeannie Crane, I'd change my name to Vivian Blaine. I wish I was <laughs> a girl named Jeannie Crane. 
Forgotten you, Fred Allen. What do you wish you was? I wish I was a house that's painted white. Painted white. I wish I was a house that's painted white. Painted white. If I's a house that's painted white, I could rent me Dr. Harry but to Taft or twice. <laughs> I wish I was a house that's painted white. I hope it'll be I guess that takes care of everybody. Oh, wait a minute, Tallulah. How about you? What do you wish you was? Well, darling, if you really want to know, this is what I wish I was. I wish I was a White House candidate. Candidate! Wish I was a White House candidate. Candidate! If I was a White House candidate, I'd handle affairs in every state. I wish I was a White House candidate. Thank you, darlings. And now here's something else of interest to you. For breathless moments, for your breathless moments. Chew dentine, the gum with <gasps> breathtaking flavor. Dentine tastes so good. Dentine freshens your breath. Dentine helps keep your teeth sparkling clean and white. Dentine, the gum with <gasps> breathtaking flavor. Before you go out and always after eating, drinking, smoking, refresh your breath with dentine. You'll love dentine chewing gum, for dentine has a wonderful tingling, nippy flavor that lingers on and on. It's delicious. And remember, dentine helps keep your teeth white, too. Keep dentine handy. You'll enjoy refreshing your breath when you chew dentine. So for breathless moments, for your breathless moments, Chew dentine, the gum with <gasps> breathtaking flavor. Well, uh, that's our show for this week, darlings. Be with us next Sunday when our guests will be Tony Arden, Judy Canova, The Continental, Herb <laughs> Jeffries, Oscar Levant, Jane Russell, Paul Wenchell, Jerry Mahoney and others, and of course, our very own Meredith Wilson and the big show orchestra and chorus. Until then, may the good Lord bless and keep you, whether near or far away, with you. May you find that long-awaited golden day today, Jan. May your troubles all be small ones And your fortune ten times ten Fred? May the good Lord bless and keep you Till we meet again, Portland May you walk with sunlight shining And a bluebird in every tree Meredith? May there be a silver lining Back of every cloud you see Phil? Fill your dreams with sweet tomorrow Never mind what might have been Judy? May the good Lord bless and keep you Till we meet again, Johnny? May you long recall each rainbow Then you'll soon forget the rain May the warm and tender memories 
be the ones that will remain. Fill your dreams with sweet tomorrows. Never mind what might have been. May the good Lord bless and keep you until we meet again. God speak to our armed forces everywhere. Good night, darlings. This portion of The Big Show has been brought to you by Chesterfield. Sound off for Chesterfield, the cigarette that's much milder with an extraordinarily good taste and, most important, no unpleasant aftertaste. By Anison, for fast relief from pain of headache, neuritis, and neuralgia. And by Dentine, the gum with breathtaking flavor. And Beeman's Pepsin, the gum that's great to chew and good for your digestion, too. The first half hour of the big show is presented by the makers of Reynolds Aluminum, the Reynolds Metals Company, who also bring you the Kate Smith Evening Hour on the NBC television network. The big show is produced and directed by D. Engelbach, and written by Goodman Ace, Selma Diamond, George Foster, Mort Green, and Frank Wilson. The chorus is directed by Ray Charles. Special musical arrangements by Sidney Fine and Earl Lawrence. This is Ed Hurley, he saying good night. <laughs> Next on NBC.